we spend $1.2 billion paying for the under recoveries in the power sector alone. That is three times more than what we spend on social infrastructure, <laughs> education infrastructure, uh, roads, um, uh, uh, agriculture, and social protection. I mean, it's not sustainable for us to keep doing that. When are we going to get the roads if we are pumping up such money uh, into, into the power sector inefficiencies? We buy gas from the gas operators. We infuse the, the, the price of the gas in the tariff. But the, the gas price doesn't come out. And the government have to find money from uh, the budget to go and pay for the gas, you know, because of the inefficiencies that are happening. So the power sector and the energy sector in general has become a very crucial, uh, 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 you know, sector for Ghana that we need to resolve as quickly as possible. In two years, we had wasted 14 billion Ghana cities you know, addressing the power sector problems. And one, two, it's any days to say whether one is okay or one is not okay. Mm. The, the situation is that uh, 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 things have changed. So if these things are going to be put in place and also if business people, and what, 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 what does it bring to business? And, and, and if people are in a position to pay and they're paying, what, 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 what are the benefits and so on and so forth? You got them. For business, it's difficult. I mean, nobody wants tariffs to go up. But if it's a situation, and if somebody is subsidizing somewhere, and for that matter, we are not in a position to be doing that going forward, I think that we should come to the book and know that, okay, if these are the right times to pay, and, and for this reason, and for this reason, I think we should go forward with it. We need to go into the depth of it and see that those increases would be used in such an efficient way that five years down the line, we are not back here again. For me, that's where the challenge is. If we are asking for certain increases, look, we didn't talk about the, the automatic uh, um, adjustment. They said it's now called uh, quarterly, review. quarterly review. If that quarterly review had been put in place continuously, it would stave some of the, the huge amounts that they're asking for in percentages. But what, what, what did PRC say? PRC said the board wasn't in place, certain things uh, came in, and so for probably a year that hasn't been done. It comes to hurt the ordinary man. The one cubic meter that we are requesting from the people of Ghana is 19 cities, 52 pesos. Okay, that is for our patients alone. But if government decides to take our, 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 our other burdens, including our capital investment, then it to go to 25 cities or 28 cities. Okay. okay, so one cubic meter, even if you take the maximum, the upper limit, it means that one cubic meter of water will cost 28 cities. Ghanaians are prepared to buy at 2,000 cities package water and they are comfortable. But when it's from the Ghana Water Company, it's at 28 cities, then they have a challenge. If we want strong institutions and we want the GWCL to serve Ghanaians the way we all expect, then we should be able to prepare, we, uh, we should be prepared mm -hmm. to pay mm -hmm. more. Now let's look at the depreciation of the city. The last type we had as a company was uh, in 2018, and that was 6.9 cities a cubic meter. As at the time, we are told the PLC that the cost of production was 15.6 cities. They gave us 6.9 cities. So since 20, sorry, since yes, since 2018, for every cubic meter of water that we produce, we lose eight cities. For how long can the Gun Water Company Limited live or work mm. like this? It's ECG broke. And we are. This is a fact. This is a known fact. We are struggling. Look, we are struggling to match the demand for using service connection. People are paying. So we can check. And sometimes the month they have not been service. We have some other tests available, maybe post and we don't have PP. You know, so PP is good. And this is like you made mention of low hanging food, for example, where the person is ready to pay. So what is the problem? And we can't even I mean sleepless night. People call you as even want service. You're supposed to know somebody. Something that somebody is paying for. But the meters are not there because they are expensive. Uh, it's subsidized. But we're allowed to charge the public for the meters we are buying. Mm. Uh, so we have to get the money to buy and then still we don't make it. But we can't charge the commercial rates for the meters that mm. we bring it. So these are challenges that we think that when we meet us halfway, we are still at the, that we submitted to the PR with the proposal and we look at targeting for the next five years. And start now. 
Right. Uh, joining me right here in the studio, I have engineer Dr. Clifford Abdallah Brimer. He's managing director, Ghana Water Company Limited. Joining us via Zoom, Dr. Steve Mantiao, policy analyst and co-chair of the Ghana Extractive Industry <clears throat> Transparency Initiative. Bright Simmons is honorary vice president, Imani Africa, and Dr. Eric Obute is acting director, research and corporate affairs, public utilities regulatory commission. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much for making time to join us on Newsfile. Morning. Right. Okay. So let me begin uh, with Dr. Steve, Steve Manteau. Uh, you've uh, heard the voices we have played uh, from Ali uh, Jarana, PRO of the uh, PURC on the tariffs. You heard Ben Boache um, on the power sector inefficiency. Dr. Han Humphrey Ayim Dake of the AGI, and then Kwame Jantwa on the issues regarding Jubilee gas, uh, and also speaking on the tariffs. You heard uh, Stanley Mante of the Ghana Water Company, and William Boating also of the um, Electricity uh, Company of Ghana. People don't know how to process what is about to happen. It does appear is bound to happen. That the ECG is asking for 148% increase in tariffs. And the Ghana Water Company is asking for 334% increase in tariffs. How should we process this, Dr. Steve Mantia? Uh, please unmute. Please unmute. Right, thank you. Thank you for letting me. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, good morning to your listeners and viewers. And uh, let me begin by saying that the demands that the utility companies are making are generally reflected of the challenges within the larger macroeconomic sphere such as inflation that is spiraling out of control, a city that, is, that cannot stand its ground against our major trading currencies, um, 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 what do you call it, interest rates that have fallen behind, um, um, fallen behind inflation, et cetera. And for these reasons, government bears part of the responsibility for the unprecedented uh, um, um, tariff increases that the companies are, are, are making. Um, it is important, however, to note that a component of the inflationary trend which has fed into this demand um, is as a result, in fact, it's important, is as a result of the uh, supply, supply chain disruptions um, arising out of COVID-19 effects. Uh, and, and the general price increases uh, globally. And so a, a certain component of the cost that has fed into the demands that the companies are making are imported, and for which reason we cannot hold government responsible. But if government were to manage the macro economy very well, and if our city was to hold its ground against the major trading currency, perhaps the, the extent of the demand wouldn't be as as, as as um, astronomical as, as it is now. Once again, uh, COVID, Ukraine, um, Russia, war is to blame for all of this? Well, not entirely, uh, because I've already mentioned that even before Russia and before um, COVID, the economy was not in the best of shape. And so we bear a certain level of responsibility for not managing the macro economy very well. And, and, and of course, the Russian conflict and the COVID have only come to compound the situation. 
to the extent that we are now having to deal with such huge demands. For me, what is worrying about the demands is also the fact that once approved, they are also going to feed into demand by workers for wage increases. And therefore, we go into a certain vicious cycle of, of price increases in the country. Mm. Um, Bright Simmons, what will be your you know, preliminary uh, comments about these impending tariff hikes? Uh, good morning, Samson. My, my view is that they are not tenable. Um, we, have, we have significant um, challenges with the proposals that have been made by the regulated utilities. And our analysis suggests that given the um, comparative analysis we've conducted with other markets in the world, um, in, in, in short, the regulated utilities are having a laugh. Um, they cannot justify the, 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 the demands that they are making. And we believe that PRC has every basis to begin active regulation. This tenders where it just sits there and requests for quality um, KPI data as opposed to probe the integrated re um, resource plans of the utilities to establish whether or not um, the return on equity um, analysis that they are making is, is sound, is no longer viable. And if you want me to delve into it um, to a greater depth, I'm happy to do so. Right. Let's dive into the deep right away. So we have to just look at the numbers, right? I mean, um, ECG has a distribution service charge um, as a percentage of the end user tariff. So what you pay at the end is um, an aggregated uh, number that comes from charging you for the, uh, for the generation of the power. So Akosombo is owned by VRA. They have a certain cost to producing the power. Then Gridco is owned by the government. They transmit the power to UCG. UCG is more or less owned by the government, and they send the power to your house as last mile distributors. And each of them take a piece of the amount of money that you pay. So if you look at UCG alone, they are getting like two point something cents per kilowatt hour that they give to you. Um, two point something cents is really good. I mean, you, you look at um, utilities of the same size as UCG, in many parts of the world, in Asia, in the US, and the rest. And they are making do with one cent, 1.5 cents, et cetera. So if you're getting two cents per kilowatt hour, you have to be quite inefficient to claim that, you know, that, that amount is, is um, much too low. So we have a problem. Of course, there are factors exogenous to their own operations, which we agree with them. And in that regard, I agree with um, Dr. Mantiel that we can't blame the regulated utilities alone because there are factors external to their operations that matter. But we still have to look at the numbers. Take the generators, for instance. Take VRE. VRE, um, not too long ago, uh, published numbers that suggest that it fuel pass through costs are being borne by the government to the tune of close to a billion dollars now. Very soon, the government's share of the pass through costs, that is the fuel cost and other at a, you know, cost for spares and the rest of it, it's going to hit like a billion dollars. Now, if you have those circumstances where th that is being uh, converted into equity, because that's how they are calculating it now, the government puts in money to discharge some of these obligations, the government assumes, therefore, that it increases equity in the holdings. And we have to ask ourselves in, that, in those circumstances whether the return on assets calculations that they are trying to suggest, the return on equity suggestions, is that the government, so like, for instance, VRC should be 11 point something percent return on equity. Essentially, I have a certain set of assets. I need a return to justify those assets. But you don't own those assets. Those assets are owned by the state. And the state doesn't have that same degree of expectation in terms of return on equity. So if those are, that, no, those are the uh, circumstances, on what basis do you demand 11% return on equity when you are state-owned utility and the state is increasing its equity contribution due to the fact that they are paying for your fuel? You're not paying for your fuel, right? You're not paying for your space. So it's already highly subsidized by the taxpayer. So when they look at just merely, you know, when they merely just look at the tariff and they say we are not paying enough, they forget the fact that the government is buying them fuel, the government is buying their spurs, and we are paying as taxpayers through that. So in effect, we are paying more than the, the, the published tariff. We are paying the subsidy that allowed that power to flow. So we don't accept their calculations. That's you know, as simple as that. When it comes to 
other dynamics uh, in, in that space where we've looked, for instance, at how um, they, they compute, for instance, the, um, oh, how do we put it? The, um, oh, Jesus Christ. They have a, a way in which, beyond the return on, on assets, they look at risk as a way of computing the return. So your head rates in that industry. To our, to our mind, a regulated utility that has a monopoly has almost no risk because we don't have retail choice. If you go to the United States, where in about 28 states or so, you have retail choice, Company, people can shift. When they've been confronted with the least competition, they've gone to the regulator and demanded that the regulator uh, more or less cobble and, and hobble their competitors. An example being the embedded generators. Mm. So they say, well, some of these industrial players nowadays are going to um, private sector operators and asking them to give us capability to generate power, and they don't have our full exposure, so we think you should regulate them even more tightly. That is because they are recognizing that industrial consumers or industrial customers now have retail choice. They can decide not to buy from ECG, in effect, therefore not buy from VRA and some of the other IPPs who are, who are also regulated. But that fact, the fact that they don't like that, tells us a lot. It means that they are not competitive. They argue about energy levies and other things like that, which are you know, somewhat viable. We have to look into that uh, into greater detail. But I don't think when you look at the cost difference between the embedded generators, the, the, in the, the, the operators that are essentially not part of the, the structure as it currently exists, when you look at their costs and you take out the contribution of the levies and the rest, I don't believe, and the analysis show, that you can account for the difference in cost between they and the regulated utilities purely on account of the levies. So it means that those embedded generators that they want uh, PRC to hobble are fundamentally more competitive than they are. Mm. So we need to dive really deep, not just you know, looking at just quality um, statistics, QS, quality of service statistics, but into their integrated resource plans. To give you an example, there are plants, power plants, within VRA's portfolio where capacity utilization is as low as 18%. And in that same category, like in solar, they are building more. How do you build a power plant where you utilize only 18% of the power plant's uh, output? 18%. So it's like you build a factory, and that factory is designed to make 100, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, packs of jollof rice. You build a, a restaurant, and you only sell 18 packs of jollof rice. And despite that, you want to build another restaurant that also makes jollof rice. All of these things makes no sense, and nobody's really delving deep into the way in which they are organized as utilities. Last point, when ECG says that its distribution service charge is low because it inherited it from PDS, and then since it inherited it from PDS, the adjustment has not been made, it goes into this really convoluted analysis about the fact that, oh, you know what, because we have split the assets from the management, the fact that um, PDS was willing to work with this low um, rate was because of that distinction. It makes no sense. I don't understand that point. If PDS was the concessionaire, and they were willing to work with that distribution service charge, then there has to be a really compelling reason why ECG argues that that charge was fundamentally flawed. Mm. So, so, so these are some of the uh, uh, issues that we have. So referring us to the difficulties within the power sector, and we know what is happening because of um, Ukraine-Russian war and all of that uh, in respect of gas and the rest of them and the oil industry as well, petrol. Uh, now, as we know, uh, transport fares are already, you know, getting out of control. So you agree that there ought to be some increase, except that what is being demanded is what you term as untenable. There has to be some increase. It has to be based on comparative analysis with other jurisdictions where there is efficiency, right? There is, it's possible that there have to be some increase, given that we have a baseline. They have become used to operating with a certain set of numbers. And now that the standard environment has changed, uh, inflation is rising, um, the currency is depreciating, they do buy certain things in dollars, the currency is depreciating, they charge in CDs. Some of those will be justified, given they have a baseline. But I'm arguing that, and definitely on behalf of the organizations that I represent, which is the CSO community, our argument is that we have to do a much deeper dive into their actual operational effectiveness okay. as utilities, as regulated utilities. Right. The cost plus model relies on us delving into their costs. 
before we can think of the plus, right? Mm. The return on equity and all of those matters. Thank so you. we're arguing that mm. the degree to which we have to examine the way they operate is so, so, so critical that until we've done that, we have to be very careful just looking at the baseline, assuming that that baseline is fixed. Mm. But yes, once we accept the baseline, then we have to recognize that uh, so long as they buy some of their, uh, their uh, uh, variables, uh, the price of their variables in USD, and yet still be charging cities. If they, the currency is depreciating, they definitely justify to ask for an increase from that baseline. Right. But that baseline is not sacrosanct. Thank you. Um, we'll have uh, Dr. Brahima justify what they are seeking. We'll have uh, Dr. Obute um, tell us the processes that will be gone through and what is likely if he's able to see uh, into uh, the end of all of this. But uh, Dr. Steve Mantea, I, I got really scared when I got the comparison or the example uh, that was made with bottled water, that we are comfortable, we are okay buying bottled water for so much, and we are unwilling uh, to pay, if you like, competitive price for water from Ghana Water Company. That scares me. Hello, Doc. Uh, please unmute your mic. That's right. Um, it shouldn't scare you. It's a part of the matter. But you see, because it's incremental in small quantities at a time, we don't buy large or bulk quantities of the water that we consume. Mm -hmm. So we don't recognize that eventually we are paying much more for, for, for bottled water. But you see, and that is the reason we need periodic automatic adjustment. If they were working, then of course, we didn't come to the situation where Ghana Water would be asking for 148% increase at a go. And so it's also a failure. I, I, I see it as a regulatory failure in not ensuring that over time, now we call it quarterly adjustments. If it's going to work efficiently, then we are not going to have a, a situation where we'll be dem demanding huge tariff increases at a time. Mm. But let me quickly also chip in on something that um, um, what do you call my, my good friend uh, uh, Bryce Simon said about the inefficiencies um, mm -hmm. while discussing that we need to pay attention to the fact that mm -hmm. certain amount of inefficiency is allowed in, 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 in utility regulation um, in Ghana I think for water um, we allow about 45% and, and for electricity I think we are around 27-28% now, uh, we need to interrogate that and see how that compares with international best practices and standards. Uh, in my view, what the PRC calls a regulatory ben benchmark, which is the level of inefficiency we are willing and, uh, and able to tolerate, uh, needs to be reviewed. Mm. Uh, I think to, to accept a situation where about half of the water you produce goes to waste is not and we need to go back to the drawing board and look at the, really look at the um, regulatory benchmarks. And, and like uh, Bright says, we need to question a number of things. As we understand, for example, for ECG, the 148% that they are requesting, if that is approved, uh, your electricity bill will not go up by 148 percent so that if you pay 300 cities a month uh, as your water bill ecg's components is just about 100 ghana cities which is the distribution service charge and it is this 100 cities or the distribution service charge that they want increase by 148%. How do they justify that, having listened to Bright Simmons? Hello, Dr. Steve Mantiao. Yeah, I come again, please. I, I didn't hear the question. I'm saying that when the ECG says, give me 148%, uh, 
they are basically asking for distribution service charge. This is like, say, a certain percentage of your bill that you pay uh, for electricity. Now, having listened to Bright Simmons and having heard the questions of waste and issues of incompetence and bad management, how is this justified? Samson, I refuse to accept the notion that the Ghanaian uh, manager is inherent, inherently um, incompetent. Because I recall from years back, I think 2005, 2006, we experimented management contracts in the water sector. We brought in a Vitens rent. Yep. And we charged them to reduce non-revenue water by 5%. Five years into the program, they were not able to achieve that. And we refused to renew the contract. Uh, management reverted to Ghanaians. And the phenomenon that heralded the, um, the coming on board of Aquavitens Run, which was the Kufo uh, gallons, vanished. The Ghanaian team was able to uh, reduce water by more than 5% over, over time. And so I, I believe that the Ghanaian manager is very competent and very efficient. Sometimes what we are prepared to do for foreign multinationals, we as Ghanaians are not prepared to do for our own. And that compromises their ability to deliver on the mandate that we've given them. So you take even football, for instance, consider how much we pay foreign coaches and local coaches. And again, if you look at Aqua Betens run, so no, uh, P we gave them a lot of concessions that we were not prepared to give um, our own ECG hmm. to the extent that they said they were better managers, but we were ready to ring fence all the legacy debt and, 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 and leave them with a clean table. And what, what was the result? Of course, there were some in, in, in the collection. Um, Dr. Mantiao's uh, line freezes there, but let me come to the studio. Um, we have... We have uh, uh, Dr. Braimer here to try to understand how they are able to justify what they seek uh, as far as the ECG uh, request is concerned. He is the managing director of the, uh, sorry, the Ghana Water Company Limited. Um, now, when I said I got scared when I heard the comparison or the example being given with bottled water, that we are ready to buy that and we don't seem to want to buy at similar price from you. Um, why I said I got scared was that not too many of us can afford bottled water and not in the quantities that we need water to use. So if the suggestion is that we are going to use that to justify bringing the price to such a level, then the poor is going to be in trouble. Even the rich may, may suffer. How do you justify what you are requesting? Uh, I don't think uh, that comparison means that the water tariff should go to that level. Because the bottled water, the sashi water, they also had to go through some processes to get to the level. Mm. Uh, we are saying that you're just comparing and to see what the differences are. We are a public utility owned by the people of Ghana, 100%. And so there are certain expenditure that if they were not on Ghana Water Company's uh, uh, books, can't bring the tariff low. I keep telling people that our current tariff, for me, is one of the best within the sub-region, if you really want to look at them. But what the other, like Bryce Simon is saying, he has equally failed to tell people what those uh, utilities that are performing the way they perform get from citizens, also from uh, maybe the, the, the government. Our tariffs, historically, not today, historically have been very, very low. And so 
current requests is an accumulation of things that should have been done over the years. Let me just give you one example. 2013, January, you can remember, I went to Savilugu to look at their system. Because they take bulk water from Ghana Water Company and redistribute to the people of Savilugu. It was a, a MIDA project. And so they wanted to examine or uh, uh, pilot such a system. So there was, an, there was a private operator that was running it. They were buying a cubic meter of water from Ghana Water Company at 86 pesos. And then distributing to the citizens of Savlugu at two cities. And so at that point, I wanted to actually look at what GWCL's records are. If these people are selling it at this level and making good money, 86 pesos, what is GWCL making out of this? Then a story can be told. And if it means trying to separate uh, the bulk production and distribution, then probably a recommendation is made academically at that time. Uh, Savulugu is very close to Tamale. So there was a problem. People live in Savulugu and work in Tamale. People live in Tamale and work in Savulugu. So they started comparing their water bills. And so they were agitations. What I'm trying to tell you is that historically, the tariffs were low. But for us as a utility, you don't need to hide anything from anybody. The PURC has a responsibility. They regulate three strong people. So they are watching over a type of system. You have the utility, you have government, and you have the consumer to make sure that everybody is satisfied. Nobody takes advantage of the other. Government is so strong mm. in this equation. And so they are also there to, so now they are doing consultation. We are saying that we have these cost buildups. And if these cost buildups are supposed to be catered for, this will be our tariff. Again, the 300% uh, the media is throwing out. GWCL has three scenarios. But we just decided to go to the market with the biggest one. Probably that will create the kind of uh, environment that we want. One, we are saying that if the government policy of 2015 that says that all loans contracted, all grants taken by government to invest in the water systems are supposed to be all lent to Ghana Water Company to pay. And so you have to escrow some money into an escrow account that is controlled by Minister of Finance and Ghana Water Company. Then they must speak to PURC and get PURC to put a tariff line so that that's specific amount will be excluded, and that's what we will use to pay Minister of Finance. But if there is nothing there, and we are supposed to take money from our operational system, uh, operational uh, cash, to do that, it's going to be a difficulty. Mm. So immediately, that online loans are taken off, about 6.1 billion Ghana cities. It comes down from the 300 to about 250. Quickly. We are also saying that the assets belong to the state. Mm -hmm. But if you begin to unlearn this to us, it's like, yes, you are a company, the asset belongs to you, but the asset belongs to government. PUR, sorry, uh, Ghana Water Company thought their asset was 2.2 billion cities. As of 2016, they're about. When we did re-evaluation of the assets of Ghana Water Company, it came to 17.2 billion. So from 2.2, that's we were thinking that's our asset. So if you are looking for any return on your asset, you are using 2.2 to calculate. Mm. Today is 17.2 billion. That's a 2018, 2019. What it means is that your capital investment costs has gone high. Mm. And if it is not catered for, you will continue to run down the systems. We are telling PURC, 
there is a way of debating and working on how to resolve this one if we sit on the table. We are saying that if we take only Ghana Auto Company and Disa, and to be frank with you, all the three scenarios have desalination also in there because it's a water purchase agreement signed, uh, Parliament actually approved it. So if we just take GWCL operation alone and then desalination, we come to about 150%. Uh, and so these are the three scenarios. Mm. And we think that, look, let's be fair to the story. Let's give the three scenarios. Then we can work on it. But remember, VRA is asking for increase in tariff. Grigo is increase, asking for increase in tariff. Mm. ECG is asking for increase in tariff. The structure of Ghana Water Company is that we do production, we do transmission, and we do distribution. So the three different units that you are seeing smaller, if you had aggregated them, like we used to have VRA doing all, the tariff of Ghana Water Company will not have been seen as that high relative to the other ones. Mm. Also remember that the tariff ECG is asking for. It's a past two costs for Ghana Water Company. Meaning what? We, will, we pay you. Our systems rely on ECG. And we are treated as commercial entity, not a, a, a company that is running water for you at a lower tariff. They charge us as a commercial entity. So these are things that we can discuss and bring the values actually down and so we are saying that if when you say bring the values down you are saying that the 334 percent demand will come down to about what uh, it depends it can even come to zero can come to zero yes to for well, that's what i said at the beginning that the current tariff the current tariff if some cost elements or cost items are taken away okay the tariff are enough. Mm. All our uh, 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 debts, those things that were incurred at the time that tariffs were so low, if all those things are taken off, but if we are supposed to do all this, one, most of our systems are over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. The pumps, the pipes, and most of you go to Choco and those places, they are complaining about water because their systems have encrusted. There are steel pipes, and because of the position all the time, the sizes of the pipe have become smaller. Mm. So you can't push enough volume of water through. You have to replace them. And the places have become built areas. If you want to replace it, it's cost. How do you do that? So these are things that when we begin to discuss, then we realize that some of these costs, if they are taken off one, if our debts overhang those times, or they call them legacy debts, are taken away, if the online loans are no longer on lend to Ghana Water Company, if we say that the capital investments are going to be taken care of by the state, all this is, will go down. And what you're, and talk, the what you're talking about... The citizens. What you're talking about, is, is that realistic? Oh, it's realistic when we sit down. It's realistic. I have, uh, in one of our sitting, told PURC, after all this, we must sit down and look at another innovative way of financing the water supply because countries are doing it. Mm. And we can equally do that because government has one bowl where they pick money and distribute to other agencies. There are agencies that will benefit when Ghana Water Company is very efficient. Okay. Uh, and then let me, let me just mm. say the last thing. You mm. see, our citizens are those that pollute our water. So if your citizens take the responsibility not to pollute the water, we are not going to increase the usage of chemical like we are doing currently in the uh, wager. From 200 bucks of aluminum sulfate a day, we are now using 300. And that's an increase in cost. Mm. And this is citizens who are polluting the environment. So when we do that, so that's what I'm saying that we, PRC is regulating the three of us. Each of us has a responsibility. Once we take our responsibility up seriously, so all these costs 
can be controlled. All right. Um, Dr. Eric uh, Obute, a, a, a Acting Director, Research and Corporate Affairs, Public Utilities uh, Regulatory Commission. Um, take us through briefly what the processes ongoing, if they have actually actively started, are like, and what should we look forward to? Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Hello, Samson. Yes, I can hear you. Go oh, ahead. Okay, Samson, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, my connection is not that stable, but um, if I heard you right, you want me to talk about the processes. That's we'll right. Through before we come up with the tariff. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. Section 22 of the Act of PORC states that the utility company could come up with a tariff proposal if they need an adjustment. But to make sure that we sanitize the whole process, the PURC actually gives regulatory time periods. So two years, five years, for instance, now it's a five year regulatory period. And for all the utility companies to submit their proposals. So it doesn't become like they submit proposals at different times. Now, when they submit those proposals, the commission would interrogate those proposals formally by engaging the utility companies. And thereafter, we would have stakeholder engagements, which is what we are currently doing. After the stakeholder engagements, we now do the public hearing, which is we open it up to the entire uh, country for everybody to make input. And this we can have as write-ups, people can make inputs through the internet, the website that we have, and they can also come to the public forum and make their input and question the utilities on the basis for which they are asking for those utility tariff increases or adjustments. Thereafter, the commission would sit and make analysis and furthermore come out with a tariff adjustment, which will be announced by the commission. So that's basically the process that we go through to arrive at the tariff. So you have, you have about three activities left to come to a conclusion. Yes, for now, uh, we are about finishing the stakeholder consultations. Um, coming week, we'll be meeting with the Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy, and we'll be meeting with the TUC as well. And we'll, we'll start with the public hearings, the meeting the general public, and thereafter, we'll would come to a conclusion by doing the analysis before the commission comes to that tariff announcement point. What, what's the timeline for this? The commission is looking at the 1st of July to come up with an adjusted tariff. So between now and the, let's say June 14th or middle of June, we'll be having this stakeholder engagement and the public hearings. Thereafter, we'll do all the number crunching and then we'll come up with the tariff at, by the 1st of July. What's the feedback like in the stakeholder meetings so far with uh, MPs and the rest of them? Well, the, um, some of them are of the view that we should give them the tariff because it's like we should buy the bullet. And this thing has been recurring for all these years. So they don't want to come back the next couple of years again and then hear the same stories. Mm. Others are also of the view that we should not give them the tariff. So it is up to the commissioner to look at the merits and demerits of the cases that are put before it and then come up with an announcement or a decision point should be reached. Imagine they were to be given the tariff as uh, demanded, as you suggest some stakeholders. Hello, Samson. Yes, can you hear me, Doc? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. So I was asking that as uh, some stakeholders have uh, suggested to you that go ahead and grant uh, approval for the tariffs they request. Imagine you granted that. What are the permutations? What, what does it look like? What will the, the cost of electricity and water be? Well, um, at this point in time, you said I should imagine, but um, the commission is not actually going to just imagine. But the commission will actually take all these factors into consideration, the benchmarks that have been set up, 
before they come up with the tariff. So I'm not going to stick out my neck and say the tariffs will go up now or they will not go up. But ECG, for instance, is saying that they should move the tariff from 16 pesos to 39 pesos, which is giving us the 148 percent that they are asking for. The Ghana Water Company has seven cities per kilowatt, sorry, seven cities per meter cubed at, the, at this particular point in time. And they are asking for 28 cities, 20 pesos per cubic meter, which takes us to 300%. But we have to look at all these numbers before we can come up with a, a decision. Mm. So as far as you are, concern, you are concerned, you are only acting as an unbiased, uh, impartial, you know, umpire, so to speak. Is that, is that your role? Exactly, exactly. Because we need to, just as Engineer Brahma said, we we'll have to consult with government, the legislature, and then the consumers at large. So we need to make sure that everybody is kind of satisfied. We can't be biased towards one side. What kind of, input, sure that, what kind of input from the public will get you to insist that for example, what they are requesting, they can only get a quarter of what they are asking. The service quality, we look at the service quality index. So if the, if the consumers are crying for the well, I don't have water running through my taps, or I get water only once a week, or my electricity is highly unstable. Yeah, we, we have to take all those indices into consideration before we arrive at a decision. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hold on there for me. Let me go to uh, Bright Simmons. And uh, Bright, you, you heard um, Dr. Brahma. What, what's your reaction to him in the justification he gives for their proposed uh, tariff hikes of 334%? Uh, so, Samson, let me, with, with your permission, let me <clears throat> start showing some figures on the, on, the, on the screen. I hope that's permitted. That's all right. So I've listened very carefully to uh, Mr. Brahma. And I mean, I do appreciate the fact that he's at the front line. He's got to keep the, the water flowing through the taps. And we have to be differential uh, in, in that sense. But the truth of the matter is we don't get enough opportunity in this country to truly scrutinize public duty bearers. So here are <clears throat> a range of tariffs that you know, apply across the country, uh, ac across uh, the continent. And while it is true that in Ghana, we haven't seen as significant a range of increases um, as has been the case elsewhere, like in Rwanda, the truth though is when you look at the absolute number, what we actually charge, we are the most expensive amongst all the major economies that I have looked at. And actually that number that you see there, the $1.06, um, it's not entirely accurate when I look at the actual numbers uh, in Ghana from a more comprehensive perspective. We are hitting something in the region of $1.14 per cubic meter. So compared to, you know, the cheapest operator, like uh, the cheapest um, water producer, like the Togolese regulated water utility, we're talking of a situation where we are more than four times more expensive from a cubic meter point of view, than Togo. What is it about Togo that is way more efficient, whether in terms of the structural um, dynamics of policy making, business environment, et cetera? So that's a fundamental challenge that I have when he says that, oh, you know, when I've looked at the region, our, our, our prices are competitive. If they are not competitive. If their prices were competitive, he would have put that in the proposal that he made to the PURC. One of the things that you observe that is that in other places where you have regulated utilities, where utilities often believe that you know, their case is very strong, they, do, they go to the extent of going to court to force rate increases because they have the evidence. The reason why our utilities will not dare do that is because that will prompt serious scrutiny. The likes of Imani and other CSOs will file uh, amicus, uh, amicus, curia, uh, amicus, briefs, sorry, amicus briefs to go and challenge them there. Because when you look deeply into the numbers, a lot of what uh, Mr. Bremer says does entirely hold power, hold water. No pun intended. Mm. I'm looking at one of the most deregulated markets in the world, the United States, where therefore making profit is fairly acceptable. 
you know, for public utilities. Here in Ghana, we don't have that degree of deregulation. We are not expecting our utilities to be making massive profits. And yes, even in the United States, when you look at approved return on equity, some of the biggest utilities there, nobody's asking for 11 point something percent that VRA is asking for. We're just talking about bottled water. Mm. The ridiculousness of that argument that has been made by some people, obviously, Mr. Bremer's arguments are much more nuanced, and I'm not in any way suggesting that he's making those arguments. But some have made the arguments as if there was a parity. And there isn't a parity. Oxygen is free. One liter of oxygen, if you decide to buy it in concentrated form, costs you almost $100 per liter. Are we going to make a comparison between free oxygen and bottled oxygen? Why does it sound more ridiculous when I compare free oxygen versus bottled oxygen to free water, uh, 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 sorry, cheap uh, tap water versus processed water? It's a competitive market in the bottled water space. Competition typically brings down prices. We don't have retail choice in Ghana. So the prices that we have are not comparative to prices are comparable to prices that would pertain in a market where there's real competition. Now, let me get to the meat of the matter. When you listen very well to carefully to Dr. Obute, the problems that we face become apparent because, as I have mentioned periodically, and obviously on this show I've already mentioned, there is an overemphasis on quality of service in computing the increases that are often demanded. And that is not sufficient. There is, from our point of view, a rough approach to trying to establish how at the very least to compute return on equity before you go into some of the other cost dynamics. And when you look carefully, the factors that prevail in deregulated markets, many of them don't prevail here. We are not paying dividends. In these utilities, they are not paying dividends. They, don't, they are often not listed on the stock markets, and, in the, and therefore, in that regard, they don't bear the pressures of earning growth. In a number of instances, they are borrowing at way below the market rate. To give you an example, what Engineer Bremer did not tell you and your listeners was that the amount of uh, the interest rate that he pays on money that is unlent to him by the government is below the, the interest rate that the government mm -hmm. as a sovereign itself pays. It's almost 300 basis points below what the government today will get on the market if it went out to borrow as a sovereign borrower. He's getting like 6% mm -hmm. on dollar loans. Who in Ghana, which entity in Ghana will get 6% on dollar loans? Can you imagine what industrial corporations in the private sector would do if they can get a six dollar, six percent dollar, dollar, dollar rates? So we have to be extremely careful in terms of being gained serious scrutiny to these matters. The way in which we stay at the surface and then we allow people to get away with it, it's not, it's not acceptable. And I think it is time that all of us in the media, in the civil society movement, becomes much more stringent in the way we apply scrutiny to uh, public duty bearers. And these regulated utilities, particularly those of them that are owned by the government, are publicly owned and regulated utilities. Mm. They have to behave like public duty bearers. So I completely disagree with a lot of the analysis that has been made because they are not borne out by the facts. Mm. And I think that the PRC yeah. should stop relying on quality of service data alone, moving to actually looking at costs. Okay. As a lot of the other uh, utility commissions around Bra the world. Brahma wants to make a quick reaction. Uh, please uh, listen uh, to him. Uh, unfortunately, Bryce Simon is speaking out of what the reality is. Which specific one, issue? Uh, one, yeah. the sub region comparison he's making. Mm -hmm. What are their inputs? What do you mean? The online loans that he's talking about. And if you say that we are taking it at a lower rate, which is not true, there is no, no, no item is on the tariff. What is not true? You're not, you're not, being like, you're mm. not getting the, your money at 6%. Pardon me, pardon me. What I'm saying is that there is nothing no, on the tariff. Not true, you can get PURC to, uh, to respond to it now. So, no, no, so, whether so, whether so, the tariff let's currently the yeah. are charging. Yeah, yeah, so, so one by one. One by one. Let, you should let me. You should one, let me speak. one by one. You said, you said you are not getting, is it the loans for at uh, 6 Six percent. Let, let me just make the point. What, 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 is what I'm correct, saying is what that is correct, it doesn't matter no, whether he's giving only zero percent. I'm just making the point. He should let me speak. No, you said that is incorrect. And it's incorrect yes, because so let's, there let's is no the... item even on the tariff build up mm. that is meant for only. 
So where is the money coming from? There is nothing like profit on our tariff. PURC can respond to it now. That there is no item on our cost build up currently that has on land. And we are saying that for us to do this on land, add it to the tariff calculation. No, the only business GWCL does. Bright, hold on. Is that on. correct or not? Bright, the only on. business GWCL does is to sell water to the people. And we have categories. Investments are not determined by profitability, by the returns. It's a social good. Government of Ghana is enjoined to send water whether the people can pay or not. That is, that is the case. Okay. And so when I am bringing a project, that's not going to give me returns. Where do you think I would put it? So when you on lend such an amount of money to the utility, then allow the utility to put it on the tariff so I that you can just said, I, just, I thought you just said there is uh, nothing on it to be unlearned. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So we are proposing. And that's why you are seeing the 300. And that's what I told you at the beginning, that when we take off the online loans, which currently is there that is no they space... Is lent money at 6% or not? I'm not clear. Is he saying that government has not... Uh, I am telling you that even grants are online. So what are you talking about that one? Grants Sorry. are online. 2015, grants were online to GWCL. No, but at what rate? Please. Was it at like 6% or not? Ah, on, 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 grant is 0%. Is in some instances. I am telling you, grant is 0%. And the online to Ghana, uh, uh, was it a uh, uh, GWCL, at a rate they collected the other ones from. No, no. Currently, if you are borrowing at 6%, please, 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 please. You are speaking cheaper. out of context. Please. You are speaking out of context. I'm sure my, your speciality is in energy. So please, let's talk to you. I am telling you that there is no item, line item on the current tariff that's for all land. Mm. And so when you give me an escrow account to pay that money in, what it means is that I have to take it from other areas to come. We are changing pumps that are over 50 years old. We are changing a pipeline that is over 55 years old. Steel pipes are 30 years old. And so today, when we are doing all this, we are saying that there is so much pressure in the past, but we are here today. We cannot continue to complain. We must take the responsibility to do what is right. And that is why it's good that PRC is doing the consultation, that everybody has a stake in this business. Let's do our bid and make sure that the tariffs are good. I can tell him again, has he checked? the liquidity of those, those uh, 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 sub-region uh, 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 water utilities, I can tell him today, it's Cape Town and GWCL that are liquid. That can have cash to pay for certain things. So let's, let's put all this in context. We can't speak because but, but, we're just but, on but, numbers. But, but what, to what end? If you are talking about the GWC and then, yeah, and then Town, again, you, you yes. having a good uh, whatever liquidity, yes. yes, and then the the prices as he showed us comparatively, you know we we can get better. What's the what's the end? Because if, because the cost build up on the tariff, some of them are absorbed by the states. If you go to Cote d'Ivoire, Cote d'Ivoire there is no galamse, and for that matter, the cost of production is as low as. Anything you can talk about. I am supposed to do a process loss of 5%. If I take 100 liters of water from the river, I should bring 95%, uh, sorry, 95 liters to you. Today, some of them, you can only get 50. And the cost of treatment has gone higher, and you are sending less. And so if you are giving a tariff over 95 liters, and you are not doing 50 liters, how are you going to make the money? And so citizens are also responsible. The people who go into the rivers to mine are those who go home and say there's no water. And that is why this consultation is very, very important. The government is supposed to ensure that they don't go there to mine in the first place. Um, it, it, let me get to uh, Doctor, uh, and I'll come back to you, uh, Bright, quickly before we take a break. 
Uh, but Dr. Eric Obute, what would you say, because um, Braima was inviting you uh, to confirm um, the issue about, you know, the percentage at which... Uh, okay, on the, just on land loans on our tariff. Yes. Whether it is captured on the, on the tariff. What, what can you tell us? It's not, it's not, it's not captured on the tariff. So, and, so if, and, it's um, zero, if it's zero percent. I also want to, yeah, I also want to respond to what Bright put up, saying that PRC only focuses on the quality of service to come up with a tariff. That is just an aspect of the tariff. The PRC looks at the, the RAP, that's the regulated asset base, looks at the depreciation, exchange rates, the inflation, and other parameters which are taken on board before they come up with your tariff. So if you just say we are looking at only the quality of service, we are focusing on only the quality of service but, to come up with But, but a, a, while ago, a, a, while a, a while ago, yourself, you singled out the quality of service. No, because you asked me a question about what consumers would say that will make the PURC maybe tilt the tariff in a particular way. That's why I came up with the quality of service. Mm. Because the consumers will basically not talk about the regulated asset base. Mm. They will not talk about that. Mm. So okay. that's why I have Samson, to answer that with that. Yeah, 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 yeah Bright, I'll, I'll come to you shortly. Right. Mm. Okay. Um, Bright, can we hear you uh, in some Nobody two minutes? And then we hear about, Dr. Steve Manteo and take Nobody a break. Nobody talked about what goes into the tariff in the analysis I made. I no, said, but you were asking me to quality. You said, you said PRC focuses on the quality of service alone to come up with the tariff, which is not right. Oh, I'm going, so I'm you going need to correct that aspect. I'm not even you need come to correct to that, that point. aspect. I've not come to that point. Mm. I'll come to that point. All right. Because that's First what you point. said. I'm just reacting yes, to uh, you. Doc, to I'm not yes. reacting to you yet. Yes. I'll react to you. Okay. First now let's point. Yes. Mm. The argument is that the Ghana Water Company gets money from the government at a rate of 6% and in some instances less than 6% on dollar loans. That is money that they use in some of the operations. Are they explicitly arguing that they don't get money at that rate or not? Because all the things that you're talking about that they don't go into a tariff and they're completely meaningless. Government, government the argument don't is know if you are an industrial operator into and you can borrow at 6% or less in this country, you've got very good. There are a lot of industrial it the that if they wrong. borrow at that doesn't rate, understand it. We'll be doing so much better. So this argument right. about whether or not they add on lending right. into the we tariff don't the rest, take it's not any money from the states. That is relevant. It's not relevant. GWCL takes take zero so, money from the states. Sorry, it says GWCL they take zero, zero money, from money from the states. From the states. You are saying Ghana Water takes uh, zero money from the states. From the states. Yes. Apart from your, the investment, it is, your own, it it is, is your the own, uh, submission. It let is the investment. Hello, it is the investment. Let me, let me actually put the exact. It is the investment the that is the responsibility of the states to distribute the water everywhere, irrespective of whether there are good returns or not that they yeah. lend to us. You know, you and that's what I'm saying. That the, the those audience. investments. Are you saying that we don't have a tariff? On on money money to you listen to this question. On lends money to you. If yes. the government on lends money to you, they on lend money to you. And I'm saying that the rate that the government on lends money to you is so low compared to what others will make that you have to be extremely grateful that you're able to get money from the government at that rate. And I'm saying that so even if it is zero, even if it is zero, you cannot even get it. Simple. Even if it is you zero percent, that the government you can get does not it. lend money to you or not. Because I'm going to if it is zero, even if it is zero, it is not on the that you yourself has made. I'm going to display on this screen commitments that you yourself have made, admitting that that's how much you you get. At, uh, from the government, the rate at which you borrow from the government, the online agreements that you have with the government. But so he's also guessing it. where are the money coming you from actually get to pay? At that rate. Where is the money coming from to pay? Where is the money coming from to service that even the zero the interest? Point. It the is point your interest. Is you borrow at six percent or less. And do what with it? And do what with the loan? What are you doing with the so, loan? <laughs> okay, fine. Ah, I will play that on the screen in a productivity. second to establish mm. the fact that you, will, you do borrow at that rate. And, and to establish important. the fact that on our the tariff, second, there is it to take the money and pay. Okay, right. Um, uh, Brian, Let, well, establish it. Last establish it. Let yes. me go to the last point about quality of service data. The last point about quality of service data is that I did not say that when you are computing the tariff, you only look at quality of service data. I'm saying that in the active regulation, the documentation that is regularly submitted to you, 
they are primarily related to quality of service and KPIs that are primarily quality of service, uh, uh, service linked. Of course, when you are doing a tariff computation, you will look at exchange rate and the rest. You all read those reports. I'll be completely ridiculous if I suggested that in actually building up the tariff, you don't consider those costs. All I'm right. saying that in your active regulation, mm. what you actually collect as in terms of reports from the re uh, regulated utilities is primarily quality of service focused. Mm. You are not collecting enough data regarding costs of the operations, cost of their investments, and you're not actively managing those matters. And I can no, we show do. you we documents do. We do. in relation to the kind of reports that you receive. And the kind we, of analysis that is performed. No, but the problems. reports are different. Right, the, the reports are different. Maybe the report we have is a quarterly report which has only the quality of service. No, I'm saying that that is what you predict. So it depends on the report. That's what I said. Ask of different reports from the commit from the utilities. We don't True. The utilities but do in not always submit the, only the, one the report. Active regulation that you engage in, the back and forth that we have reviewed. 90% of those back and forth are related Hello? to KPIs that are primarily quality focused. They are not focused to, uh, they are not related to investment cost. You are, I've never seen a, a, a query from you to any of the regulators in the last year looking at any cost related matter that is investment driven. And if you are able to show us on the screen, I will happily retract a single uh, uh, regulatory query related to investment, even if it's a capping model that you are, you are questioning the inputs or whatever. So when we say these things, don't make the, uh, don't create the impression that we are somehow deceiving the public, because we look at these documents just as much as you do. All right. So when um, we make the arguments, mm. it's careful as public duty bearers, mm. you allow us to mm. have a truly reasoned debate that is based on rigorous analysis of the figures. Right. And the data that uh, exists. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Steve Manteo. Um, yeah. Very briefly to conclude on this subject, so we can take a break and return to look at the issue of a Japa. Um, the, the economy is, is bad, like you admitted from the beginning. Uh, people are suffering. People um, can't afford uh, transport, food. Everything is getting out of hand, really. Um, so what, what is realistic? Because from, it is agreed that the production chain will require some you know, will go up as a result of what is happening globally everywhere. So what would be realistic for people in Ghana who, you know, are, are, are faced with all of these challenges? Well, after reviewing the data, I think at the end of the day, what would be realistic is tariffs that will keep the utilities um, 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 in, in business, tariffs that will sustain their operations because the converts will be worse and very difficult to think about. A situation where their operations cease and therefore we will have to um, resort to um, other sources of water and to resort to generators and all that, those will be much more expensive. So even as we discuss these issues, I think it's in the interest of every consumer that at the end of the day, we pay tariffs that will keep the utility companies in operation. Okay. Um, Dr. Dr. Obute, pe pe people are panicking ahead of this, uh, what you expect to bring forward, because already they are struggling to afford. What will you tell them? Yeah, um, well, everybody should just stay calm. Few of us will take um, a very good look at all the proposals that are before the commission, and then we'll take a decision by the 1st of July. The commissioners will uh, announce that decision by the 1st of July. Mm. But maybe um, to just put a little bit of um, speech to uh, Bright. Bright, if you just go onto our website, you'll see the guidelines of the commission. In that guideline, you see everything that we do to come up with the tariff. So I just want us to stay away from that aspect of saying that the commission will only focus or delves a lot more on the quality of service. We do much more than that. Mm. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Bremer. Yes. You give an impression that there are other ways by which you could actually come to zero demand yes how can you successfully push 
uh, a bit more of that so that citizens will be cushioned? No, it, uh, it, it has to be innovative. I am saying that, look, if you currently go to uh, our health institutions, a greater part of the disease they carry there are waterborne related. Mm. Minister of Health has a budget. Minister of Sanitation has a budget. Uh, Ghana Water Company is a, a utility company. Minister of Environment. Exactly. What will we do in increasing access and quality to the citizens such that the cost of Minister of Health for the hospitals will come down? This is something that can easily be calculated with uh, uh, was it uh, proper data. And then you say that, okay, at a point, let's shift some of the resources from health to water. Oh, so I the see. tariff can go down. Two, who are those polluting the, 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 the water? It's not the mines. Mm -hmm. Whether they are illegal, legal or not, they are with the mining sector. What can the mining industry do as far as water supply is concerned? Because I take a hundred cubic meters of water, I am supposed to take 95 cubic meters to the citizens and sell at a unit rate and get this money. But because of the activities, I'm getting 50, but the cost has even increased. Mm. So can you also look at a margin to support government to give that money? That's where yes. you bring in the individual responsibility also. Exactly, because the utility company, can you imagine Ghana Water Company shuts down for a week or two mm. for the whole country. Mm. Do you know the cost? You can't imagine the cost. And so this is a utility company that all of us must protect. Uh, Mateo indicated, we brought a VRL here. I keep saying it, and I'm challenging anybody. With the help of World Bank, government of Ghana together, gave them $100 million. Mm. 2017. We took over. Nothing given. We, the PURC, uh, sorry, the tari uh, non revenue water was at 54% in 2017. It's currently 45%. I see. Nine percentage points in five years. So, but they got yes. that, and they couldn't reduce it. Mm. And they were supposed to have been reducing it by 1%. So you, you are making a case that you deserve to be supported. And applauded. Mm. And people, when they are looking at the numbers, they shouldn't be looking at that the bottle is half empty. Because Samson, can the, we look on the screen now uh, as well? I'm coming. I'm coming. The okay. hole is deep. We are feeling it. It has not come out for you people to see mm. that the gravel has gone in. All right. And so when you are beginning to judge it as if nothing is happening, PRC will tell you that GWCL is now more proactive. We are doing a lot of things on our own. And I can tell you, our uh, industrial meters, we purchase them with our own money. Bulk meters, we purchase them with our own money. We are carrying out innovations within the system to get the system running. Mm. But it takes two so some time uh, to the, rectify the, the entities that, that owe you money. Yes, we're after them. Mm. We're going after them. Just like ECG, I've been surprised to read and to learn about those who owe ECG in the millions. And you can't understand what sort of culture is this. Um, so let, let's, let's uh, have uh, Bryce Simon, uh, you have the last word. So I'm just showing on the screen right. for your, your, your viewers to read themselves. Yes. On lending of grants. That the Ghana Water Company borrows from the Ministry of Finance, which is searching the government of Ghana, at 5.76% at the beginning of 2021. And they've got rates at 6% in December 2021. This That's is right. coming from their own submissions to, to the PRC. Okay. So absolutely cannot be the case that they don't borrow so at that rate. So on lending of grants, grants and loans. It is a guarantee the of the finance, la, the debt is overhang. Is there, are, there are 5 million or more households in Ghana. 36% mm? of them have access to pipe bond water. Mm. So at the very least, there are about 1.5 million people enjoying pipe bond water in Ghana. Mm. If you take community water and sanitation agency out, 
you should have at least something in the region of about a million customers. Okay. Ghana Water has only 680,000 customers. That's so true. He's not even mobilizing enough that is to so ensure true. that wait, he that wait, so true. enough customers. So I don't accept Dr. Bre uh, Mr. Bremer's argument that there's no more he can do on his side. Mm. And as okay. I said in the very no, beginning, no, no, right. so, so let's let, this, this, thank, you, thank, thank you, Brian. Brian. Thank, thank you, Brian. It's complete. Now, 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 now Dr. Brian. No, no, Mr. Yes, yes, uh, uh, right, right, hold on, right, hold on. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Yes, Dr. Brian. Yes. So the the except that he just pulled. That's, that's what I want to respond to. Clearly confirms that he's coming from a position of reading from facts from yourself. I am saying that this is a justification to PURC for that increase in tariff because it is not contained in the tariff. So How is he supposed to trans uh, to interpret this? That's what I'm telling him. He interpreted this and that's, you say he's wrong. But this is what no, you put no, out. No, I am saying that government of Ghana online loads. I mentioned this here. Mm. And if that is taken out, the tariff will come down. And if that is supposed to be there, then they have to put this on the tariff. And that's what is bringing it to 300. And that's why he must understand that it is a proposal. And if you are writing a proposal, why don't you indicate justifications? At the beginning of 2021 and now gradually increasing to whatever yes. figure. So, so at the rate we of, can pay. At the, at the rate of 6.00 in December 2021. And uh, they talk about the rate of uh, LIBOR interest, 4% interest That's what rate. they give to us. But mm. we are unable to service it. But it is in our books. Okay. Because there is no line item for right. it. Okay. We are saying that mm. if they want us to do that, mm. then all this must be captured okay. on the tariff. All right. Thank you very much. And, and thank you, for, uh, thank you, Bryce Simmons, for also bringing this up uh, to put this and, matter and, and, to and, rest. And, yes. Yeah. Evidence to prove the PRC point as well. Okay, because I think we let you. people get away without scrutiny. Thank you. Thank you. We take a break here. And when we return, we will go to look at the issue of um, a JAPA. And Bright Simmons will stay with us. Dr. Steve Manteyao is still going to be with us. We'll be joined by Benjamin Boache, Executive Director, Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP. We'll be right back. <laughs> 